Okay. So today we want to talk a little bit about. Great. So you guys are in mute mode, but what I'd like you to do is take a moment and type in the chat box one word or phrase that captures how you're feeling today. And I don't mean just today, meaning I woke up today and I didn't like last night's dinner, so I'm not feeling so good today. But just today overall, it's May 13th, 2020. Um, we're in the middle of the situation that we're in. How are you feeling? So take a moment and do that, and then Julia will come back and we'll take a, we'll take a pulse of how things are going um, with the group uh, as we go. So um, a descriptor, one word or one phrase that captures how you're feeling today. Are you nervous? Are you anxious? Are you encouraged? Are you excited? Are you, um, you know, are you claustrophobic? Are you stir crazy? Are you nervous or whatever? Okay. So just one thing that, um, uh, one thing that um, captures where you're at today. Because, you know, we said you've got to get through April. April was education in April. And in the month of May, we were going to start to see states opening. And 48 states now um, are in some measure of opening. And, you know, over the next, over the next uh, couple of weeks, you know, there, there are going to be, with a few exceptions, um, most, almost all states open for some or part of their economy. And as we're seeing, there, we're, it's going to be a stepped Re, relaunch of the economy as long as as they open up one piece to the economy the our cases and hospitalizations continue to trend downward and um, then we are there you know the the economy will continue to open um, continue its open um, now the our, our Congress is talk is talking right now about another round of stimulus uh, three trillion dollars uh, another round of stimulus that will include uh, money for small business owners, individuals. They're looking to ex uh, have more PPP funds, another $175 billion in funds. Um, they're, they're going to have, uh, they're going to extend the unemployment benefit, the $600 a month, as well as individual payments to, um, uh, to individuals and families. Because they're recognizing that, you know, as a staged rollout, as a staged relaunch, um, it's going to take, it's going to take some time to get back to 100%. You know, some, you know, Kelly and Stu are going to open up, as other restaurants and retailers are, to 25% capacity. Right, you're allowed or 25% occupancy. So we're going to get creative. We'll talk through that a little bit. But we want to uh, we want to um, uh, we want to uh, go through the staged opening. They realize it the same way, and so they're going to have to provide some stimulus uh, to this and um, making sure that we can continue our operations. They have heard over and over again just how bad it would be if the economy would ever revert back to where it was. So they're going to do everything in their power in order to make sure they don't have to shut down the economy again. That would be, that would actually be more disastrous to them than us, to be quite honest. But it, it wouldn't be good for us, but it would be more disastrous for them. Okay, so, um, so new round of stimulus. We should probably, you're going to hear this heat up uh, over the next couple of weeks. Some version of it is going to get passed as they, as the political groups always uh, pivot. The Democrats don't like the Republicans. Republicans don't always like the Democrats or what they're proposing, but they always seem to find some middle ground after they're done posturing. So, and, and they've done a good job of doing that thus far. So that'll continue on. Um, and we talked about it a month ago. What was my prediction? Designer masks, baby. Um, Here's Fergie with her designer masks that beautifully match her gloves. If you've got a dog, why, why clash with your dog? Okay. Then there's the bikini. The, the iconic summer wear is now the trikini or trikini. I'm not sure how you say it, but it now comes with a matching face mask. And even you, even you dapper and dandy gentlemen out there wearing a suit, you're going to get a custom fashion mask that will match your tie or pocket square or shirt. So here we are. Um, I knew the whole let's wear a construction mask or a surgical mask was never going to last. 
in uh, certainly in the U.S., but I think we can include the uh, we can include the Western world. No shot. People are going to walk around in that. Um, we're going to find a way to make that a little bit more stylish and and make our statement, fashion or otherwise, with our with our safety equipment. Um, so uh, so we're back at work. The creativity's already kicked in, and and so we talked a little bit last week about how COVID ripped the bandage. And, and as I mentioned before, this has been as harsh and unrelenting and brutal as as they come, and there is no place for the middle ground during this time. As you can see, the customized economy and the standardized economy are going to split either f even further, and you're going to have to pick your poison here. You're going to have to pick your path, right? You, what you had prior to this, what you had prior to this COVID experience with your clients, you're going to have to update, refresh, repurpose, okay? This gap is going to continue to widen, so, so this is the conversation I wanted to have with you all today is we need, when I say you, you, but we together, let's talk about how we redefine the customer relationship, okay? So I want to talk to you about what we call in coaching the dyadic versus the triadic relationship. Most of you started your business and there was a dyadic relationship. There was the client who needed a product or service, and there you were right behind that little ball called product or service, and you were, the, you were the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain pulling the strings, making sure you had the products ready for clients to come and buy it. That day, folks, is gone, okay? Unless you're going to become Amazon, unless you're going for a high-volume, online, standardized experience, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you do that, that's your model. But for most of you, I suspect that's not the model, and you're going to want a more customized experience. The dyadic relationship is going to exist with Amazon, Wayfair, online portals, e-com. It's going to live there, okay? And you're going to, you don't have as many opportunities to influence the client. Okay, and we keep getting we keep getting more and more sophisticated as buyers, right? Now we can add Rakuten to our online shopping that'll go out and find us all the coupons. You know, you're going to walk into Macy's. Someone says, "Can I help you?" Oh no, no, I'm just looking. That's code for I'm going to find what you have on the shelf. I'm going to take a picture of it, and I'm going to find where on the internet can I get this thing? Can I get this thing cheaper? That's what, that's what just looking is code for. Can I buy it cheaper online? And the most of the retail world hasn't quite figured out yet that they are glorified showrooms for the most part, okay? Unless they pivot, unless they pivot, right? What is it, Ocho Chino, the, the uh, apparel shop that'll come and measure you. You know, Tesla has these, has these little boutique showrooms where they'll take you for test drives and climb all in and out the cars. It's a real experience. I never thought I would say a Microsoft store is cool, but if you walk into a Microsoft, Microsoft store, they've got that huge interactive whiteboard. It's actually more interactive than an Apple store. The products aren't perceived as cool as Apple. Apple probably has more traffic, but in the mall that we go to, uh, I think it's um, uh, Chandra, what is it? The Willowbrook Mall has the Microsoft store, I think it is, All right? Um, and an Apple store. I go into that Microsoft store each time, and two, two minutes while I'm looking for something, you know, at the latest Surface or the latest gadget or whatever, Vanya's on the interactive board. The whiteboard has got to be, what is it, four feet wide and seven feet tall, right? They've made it an interactive experience. So is Apple. Not all retail is dying, but there needs to be this new relationship. So, so the, the days of you're the client, there's the product, I just throw it out there, and you come get it, for most of us, that day's gone. Or if you're going after that market, you're going at, you're, you're now in a different game. You're in the standardized economy digitally, right? So even if you say, well, wait a minute, I've got the app that does facial recognition and can measure you right here. I get it. I get it, right? But it's, that's still a dyadic relationship. In winter, we, in winter, especially this winter season of business that we're in, and in the new normal for the next nine years, we need a triadic relationship. Okay, the triadic relation, the dyadic relationship 
is an A to B, client's A, your B, you B puts it out there, a client comes and gets it. Those were the older days. That's the supermarket, right? And if you sell toilet paper, that's fine. It's a consumable, and I need it, so I'm going to come and get it. That's cool. Nothing wrong with that. But most of you provide some sort of customized relationship, or you have multiple products, or you, or you have to customize beyond your, beyond your competitor. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the client, um, the client, you, the product and the service, partnering. It's now a partnership. It's a triadic partnership or a triangle. And you, the client, and the product and service all have to have a shared goal. All have to have a shared goal. And that shared goal is easing the distress of the client or, um, or satisfying a lifelong desire, think bucket list item. You know, but in a past life when I had my construction company, I built log homes. If you are so inclined for the log home lifestyle, that was a dream purchase, right? When was the last time you were like looking forward to going to see your home remodeling contractor because you couldn't wait to hear about the latest and greatest delay, long lead item, permit issue? Well, that's what it was like. When I was building a log home, this was their dream building, their ultimate desire building, okay? And what, what would happen is I would say, oh, you know, it's, it's, be careful. It's raining. It'll be a little muddy on the job site. And they would say, well, you know, Carl, if you, if it's muddy, you don't have to go. We're not in a rush. We just want to get it right. And I remember the first house I built when I heard that, I was like, did I just hear what I thought I heard? Because every other time when I was just building your primary residence, it, well, I was just another jerky contractor, and they were saying to me, oh, it's muddy, huh, Carl? It's rainy? Wear a poncho. I guess you're going to get wet. Oh, don't track mud in the house when you're working in there. That's what, the, I, that's what I would hear. But when I was building their dream item, all of a sudden, whole new ball game. Okay, so we have to rally around the top desire and the top distress of our clients. Okay, so think of it. So take a moment. We've we've done this exercise before. I want to put it in a slightly different light. Take a moment and write down what is it? What are the top five complaints about your industry? Maybe not about you as a company. Maybe you as a company, but maybe not but about your industry. So how would you know that? So think of the um, customer, negative customer, customer reviews you've gotten or competitors have gotten, the sales objections you get from a prospect when you're telling them about your product or service, and when you, when you win a project and they tell you why they chose you, they'll a lot of times tell you why they didn't cho choose somebody else. Those are your complaints. Those are the distresses. Okay, now let's add to that. What's going on in their life right now that makes calling you a must? What was the trigger event or events that made calling you a must? Not a nice to have, but a must. Like it's urgent. I don't mean it's life and death, but it's urgent. You know? Did they, uh, so I don't know if Ron, Shul I can't see the whole group, but uh, if Ron Shovelin from Shovelin Mattress is on, Ron has learned that one of his research shows, he may, he's a direct uh, factory, direct mattress factory. Well, he's learned that one of the items people are likely to buy when they move is a mattress. We don't normally take our old mattress with us. We use the move as a trigger event to throw out our old mattress because it's so big and bulky and buy a new one when we get there. Well, since he knows that, he subscribes to the lists, you know, the, the welcome wagon uh, lists and the new mover lists and, and uh, you know, the Chamber of Commerce publishes what businesses and people came into town. They subscribe to that because that's a trigger event that says, I need to call a mattress company now. It's not life or death, but it's urgent. Okay? Right? What else happens? If you're a high speed go out in, out in the Midwest, you know, um, if, if I've got a, if I've got a hydraulic piece or a piece of equipment that runs on hydraulic fluid power or hoses, and I, e I'm either in the middle of a very important assembly line run and I don't have backups or one of my hoses springs a leak. 
I remember when I had my construction company, the moment my excavator would, would uh, spring a leak on a hydraulic hose, I was done for the day. That was it. So I, I had to have backup hoses, I had, or I would call, I would call the, service, the field service company immediately because so, they could do a four-hour response. But when I was on an important part of the job, I'd call them in advance, all right, you know, because I can't afford any downtime. So what, what, what is it for your customer? I've got, a, I've got a product here I can't finish, meaning I can't, I can't clean the finishing. So I've got a problem that I can't solve. Who do I call? I've got to call Kramer Industries, all right? I have an insurance claim. I've got to call Metro PA, Metro Public Adjustment, okay? Who, why is it somebody needs to call you, all right? A top, a, a top line executive left, I need, I need a staffing company to come in. I call RJ Bird or True Talent Group. Okay, so think about why that it, why it is it important that somebody calls you now, okay? Now, if we're successful in this triadic relationship, all we've done thus far is generate a phone call or, you know, a quick, uh, a, a live chat or an email or whatever, but we don't necessarily have them as a client yet. If we are successful, all right, we, if, if we are successful, we need to understand what are the trigger events, what are the distresses, what are the desires, what are the dreams of the client. And then you and the client and, the pro, and, and when we say product or service, the engagement is now designed to solve those. Now think, now think about what I just said. What I'm implying is you're not there to make the cu customer happy, right? You're there to handle the desire. In the triadic relationship, you're not actually taking the side of your client. The client is the vehicle that, meaning is the, is the person who carries the wallet that initiates the wire or the credit card or the check or the cash transfer so you can do business and you've got to go through the client. Totally get that. But the relationship is you are aligning side by side and you're creating a shared goal to handle the situation they're in, to solve the problem they're in, okay? Now, this is, um, COVID is a great time to have this conversation because it's flattened the field in many ways. Every, if you got locked out, locked out, everyone got locked out in your industry. If you're down to 25% capacity, everybody in your niche got, did the same, for the most part, okay? So with few exceptions, if you got hurt, so did your neighbor. So what that means is it's a level playing field. If you felt you were behind at all, you're now level. COVID made you level with your competitors. Now it's time to redefine the relationship. So as you reemerge, we're, we're in front. We're on top. Okay? So if you felt like you're, you're, you felt at all like your competitor was getting the best of you, you don't have any excuse going forward. As a matter of fact, right now, Facebook, we've been telling you Facebook traffic is up considerably, like 40%. Ad spend, not all, Facebook's doing well, but there's a lot of your competitors are not spending money right now. As a matter of fact, over the last week, I've had conversations with at least five of you where you have told me that you rank higher up in the, you rank higher in Google organic search right now. And you said, well, we're not spending any more money or doing anything different. You're not. Guess who is? Your competitor. Your competitor is making the classic mistake of pulling back on marketing when expenses are tight. That will be their downfall. We're not there to help them do their job. Okay? Right now, what we want to do is we want to look at how, how can we start to message differently? So, I'm Julia. Uh, are you still on mute? Can you come off mute for a moment? Yes. So Julia has to get some props here. Um, Julia is very modest, but a month ago, we, you know, we had a strategy meeting. It was Julia and Melissa uh, uh, and uh, Menelin, and um, we we've been telling you April was Education Month. Remember that? Educate in April. So we did that too, and. To Julia's credit, as well as Melissa, because they put together the programs and the contents and all that, we can give a golf clap and a video clap, a video clap for them, visual clap for them. Um, 
our online audience likes fans, followers, engagements, subscribers, you know, appearance, views, downloads, all together more than tripled just this past month. Be, sorry, these past two months. And we're, and we're on pace for an audience that'll be near 1.5 million this year. And that's maybe because the stuff we're putting out is so great, but I have a feeling a lot of people are pulling back as well. So kudos to Julie and her team because they made that happen. Right? You're welcome. And, um, and so we've seen, we've, cause we, there's two major calculations we still haven't done yet. We still have to do a little bit more research, but the numbers might come in a little bit higher. Our next challenge is now going to be conversion because we did, we did what's on this screen here. What it did was it, it generated eyeballs. It had generated interest. Now we've got to convert. Now we've got to decide how we, how, how we best convert that those, that audience. That'll be our next thing to do, our next pivot. But the, but what we did was we rallied around this graphic. What are the desires and the distress of the client or clients, and how can we best align with shared goals around them? Okay? Now, we got to give ourselves a little ranking. But before we do that, uh, Julia, let's see how everyone's feeling. And then, everyone, I'm going to ask you to – I'm going to give you two questions, and I'm going to ask you to rank yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. So if you can get ready with that. Um, so Julia, how is, um, so we, we, we have the concept of the triadic relationship. We're going to dive into how we start building out a shared, uh, a shared uh, goal here so we can align around it. But what was, um, how is the group feeling? Did anyone respond? And if so, what were their, what were their responses? Uh, yes, they did. Um, mostly positive, I would say. We had a, cool. a great, it's a beautiful spring day. We had three optimistics and a very optimistic and one more optimistic, and we had a mix which was optimistic and anxious, and then two further anxious, a hungover, an excellent, encouraged, blessed, ready, accomplished, motivated, hopeful, grateful, and expectant. Awesome. Love it. Love it. And I just got to know, who's, who got their hands on alcohol? How did you get hungover? I just want to know who, who you know. Forget PPP, PPE, it's harder to get your hands on, on your drink of choice. But well done on that. Um, so I'm glad you're feeling, I'm glad you're feeling optimistic. I'm glad you're feeling motivated. You know, that's mentally the right place to be right now because this is your shot. You're going to look back on this time and say, this is when we quickly pivoted. We, we grieved. We, felt bad for ourselves, we threw a tantrum, we had a hissy fit, but we did it and we got over it and we moved on, okay? Because this is the time not just to pivot, but to dump, and, and I'm not talking about a major business model pivot here, I'm just saying doubling down on your audience, okay? We want to double down on the audience, but very specifically on what's their dream, right, desire, and what's their, what is their distress? Because during winter, that's when, pe that's when people turn to experts is, how can I still get what I dream of, and how can you help me out of my distress? And we want to target that very specifically, right? So what is, you know, so I, we, we're hearing a lot of different feedback about states or parts of states that have opened. There's some places that have said, Hey, wait a minute. It was so busy. The health inspector came in and gave me a violation because I was over my capacity. It got there quicker than I thought. And some people would say, well, this place is empty and it's crickets. And you're going to see varied, you're going to see varied, um, examples of that as we get back to work over the next, um, two, you know, one to three months. There's going to be some areas that are skittish, some that are not. But I tell you what, the people that are going to come back quickest, the people that are going to come back the strongest are the ones that are going to have the best message and are fully committed to, to this triadic relationship. Because if you here's – here's the thing. If you – if I have a – so think about this for a moment. In the dyadic relationship, if I just have a product or service or you just have a product or service and there's customers that just come and get them when they want and, you know, you have a product and service and, they, and the client drives it. Uh, drives the transaction and it's not a partnership, then 
If you make a mistake, guess who has a problem? You do. Because they came to you, you made a mistake, you got to fix it. But in the triadic relationship, because they are so invested in their dream or so invested in their distress, and they come to you and you are now partnering on the solution, if something goes wrong, guess who has a problem? We have a problem. We have a problem. We're all invested in this solution. We're, the, the client is going to help you make sure you can fulfill. Okay? So, you know, just take a silly example. Back in my construction days, I'm on a big project, and I say, hey, guys, I'm a little worried about these couple hydraulic hoses. I need them changed really, really quickly so I have so little downtime. And they're like, or give me the address. Great. Where are you? I said, I'm all the way in the back of the site. I can't get the truck there. You got to make sure you got the machine all the way up in the front. Ah, oh, you're killing me. Really? Yeah, well, you want this done quick or not? I want it done quick. I have distress. I have a deadline. So guess what? I, I will pick the most, the least interruptive time to crawl the machine to the service area so he can get in there, change the hose, get out, and I'm back, I'm right back to work. Whereas if I was just wanted a hose, I would say, oh, go get the hose, go bring it back, and machine's in the back, you work it out. Just, you know, come anytime after three o'clock. We are invested in it. So if we, can, if we can create this triadic relationship around our client, we are in it together. They, are, they will open up to us more and tell us more about what their year is looking like for forecasting or for us to sell them more, okay? Um, all right. So, um, okay, so on to our rating system um, here. I've got two questions for you. Let me say it longhand first so you don't have to write it down, and then I'll give you the short version. So this is how compelling are you as a company, right? And, and, and to some degree, your message, you know, what you do, how you do it, why, you, why you're in business. So how compelling are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, wait a minute. There we go. On a scale of 1 to 10. And you're going to take two, you're going to give two numbers. One is how compelling are you to your employees? Second one is going to be how compelling are you to your customers? So the first one is to what degree on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being boring, 10 being compelling, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, um, uh, how, to what degree are you so compelling that an employee would, would be willing to leave, their, uh, to leave their current place of employment and come and work for you and earn less than they earn right now? On a scale of 1 to 10. 1 is, no way, it's all about price. If I don't pay them enough, they're not coming over. Or... Yeah, we get it all the time. Like, yeah, we've got a great mission, a great cause. You know, our technology is, is, is uh, cutting edge and people love it and they want to come here just to learn it. All right, we get that all the time. So to what degree? One is really low, 10 is high. So, so just, um, so the first answer, so type in your answer now, right? So, and then Julia will read them, okay? On a scale of one to 10, it doesn't matter what your number is. We're not going to say your name, just... Let's just see what, how compelling you believe your, custom, your, your company is as it relates to the employee experience. One is boring, 10 is compelling. Okay, Julia, anybody answer? Or am I going too quick? Oh, okay, yeah. we got some. All right. Sorry, I have to scroll back now. So we've got, do you want the people's name as well? No, just, you could just run through the numbers real quick. Okay. So we've got a four, um, four, eight, nine. These are all for employees. Gotcha. Um, uh, another eight, a seven, an eight, an eleven, a seven, 11. an eight. Uh, another eight, another seven, a nine, and a seven. Awesome. So we've got scores. I thought I heard of ranging from a four to 11. I like it. Um, now, if you gave yourself a score of 7.9 or less, there's just some work to be done there. What else would have to make your company, the work environment, the work experience, the career experience, even more compelling? If you have an eight, nine, 10, or 11, 
congrats, that's awesome. Now, whatever it is, we, we still want to work on it to make it better. But we want to make it as compelling as possible because people are going to realize, so, so people will realize there are non-monetary reasons to work for you. What am I going to learn, right? Maybe it's your training or certification program or the career path I'm going to go on. All right. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's you've got some great technology, or you have something that's proprietary, or maybe that you you get behind a really great cause, and they feel that they are aligning around that cause. Okay. So those are some of the areas we'll look at there. Now let's do the second question. Okay. So this is compelling as it relates to your how com how much your customers think you're compelling. So so this one is. To what degree is your, is your business so compelling that your customers are willing to leave their current provider and buy from you and pay more, meaning pay your premium? On a scale of 1 to 10, like 1, no, that never happens. No way. It's all about price with my customers. There's no way around it. That's it. And 10 meaning, yeah, absolutely. We have clients that are leaving what are considered mid, mid-level or lesser brands. They come and they, they come to us and they're paying our premium. And, and while we get the price objection now and again, it's not a big problem for us. Okay, so give yourself a score on one to 10. One low, 10 high there. <clears throat> okay, Julia, what do we got? Anyone? We have an eight, um, a seven. Oh, and earlier Joe said that he had a hundred for employees because he has Eddie Tuminia. <laughs> <laughs> Since when does Eddie Tuminia work for less? I think he's the highest paid guy in the in the business. It's great. I love it. Love it. Well done, Joe. A nine, an eight, an eleven, two tens, a six, a seven, and a nine. Cool. All right. So we've got so we've got some real you've got some real strong feeling like your clients are going to pay that um, uh, you are going to pay that premium. If if you're seven point nine or less, that's great, and we've got some work to do. All right. We want to make it more. What are we not offering? What are we not identifying? What's not in the messaging that that's not allowing them to pay our premium? If you're a nine, ten, eleven, or in Eddie's case, 100, all right, if you're a 9 or above, it's time to look at our pricing. If you are 9, 10, 9, 10, 11 consistency, like, oh, yeah, they pay my, we need another level. If you're at platinum, you need emerald. If you're at emerald, we need to go to ruby. If we're at ruby, we go to titanium. All right. So if you're, if you're at 9, 10, or 11, it might mean that there might just be another level or there might be um, some additional price elasticity in there. And it doesn't always have to come from, it doesn't always have to come from uh, raising prices or um, uh, raising prices or a, um, a massive change. Sometimes it's in how you bundle them, right? Sometimes the perceived value of something um, is is higher when you combine two services. For example, um, we went to a new printing service who prints our books. He actually charges more per book, but he gives us slightly more. We pay a little bit more per book. However, um, it's we're allowed to do shorter runs, which is important to us, and he stocks them. So if we need 10 books, we don't pay the 10 book price. We've already gotten our 500 book price. And if we need 10 books, he'll, he'll, send, he'll ship them out at that price, right? So, so it's not always about, you know, if I just got the books or I just had him stock, different story. He combined both, and he's got a print on, he's a, a local print-on-demand guy. It's great. It works out, it works out awesome. Um, so sometimes it's combining the services. Sometimes it's raising the prices, and we favor always having a platinum level or high level offering an option because that helps set the, the brand quality. But there, once you've done that, we can also offer some specials or inducements, not necessarily discounted, um, 
but there some one one of the things you can do is do an analysis of some of your products or services that have higher margins or margins you can play with a little bit and you can use them as specials or discount discounts right we had a restaurant client for a period of time and uh, we we looked at his specials board each week and they were typically low margin meals and we said to Vito Vito is his name so Vito people don't pick the the meals because they're good your meal all your meals are good they pick them because you recommend them so let's let's make a list of your highest margin products and let's offer them as a special rate a lower rate and let's see what happens so the his average ticket increased almost 30 percent and that sounds amazing and it was for to some degree but it went from eight dollars to eleven dollars right he was eight dollars and changed to about eleven dollars average ticket because people were buying his specials and he was even he was even able to offer them at a slight discount um, but people bought them because people like Vito and he was around forever so when they would come into his pizzeria uh, down in Eaton Town as a matter of fact uh, Vito went from eight to eleven bucks um, he went from eight to eleven dollars on fifty-five thousand tickets. By the way, of of this type of client. Um, so, okay, cool. Um, all right, so we've got our rankings. We've got our rankings, and um, uh, and and look, guys, I think it's really important during this time that we. I'm just going to put the accountability check-in up up here. You know, as we always do, we put the accountability from the last week. But what we need to do. Um, with the client the client right now is assessing whether it's safe to go back out into the economy who can I trust who should I trust who should I give my business to who should I give my business back to all right and the subject matter expert is going to win all right if now you have all made the smart choice to stay open during this time and stay active to the extent that you are allowed to stay open, but you are all active and in front of the client. Remember we said before, if you're invisible now, you're gonna be invisible later. You have all chosen to be visible, smart move, okay? But the winter season of business favors the subject matter expert. Right now, everybody is starting to think about what am I gonna do when I go outside? I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, when can I start selling my shit? I get it. I'm doing the same thing. We're all doing the same thing. But right now, everybody on planet Earth is getting close to going back outside, and they're all asking the same question. Who, uh, who am I giving my money to, and where am I going? And right now, that, fee that playing field is level, right? If someone was in front of you, they're not anymore, okay? And, and not everybody is being, um, you know, incredibly clever during this time. So now is the time to, uh, to, so to double down. You know, that's why I put the line by line analysis of every project, prospect, and client, right? It's time to double down on your social media, uh, release all those videos, um, you know, uh, pu publish that article. Call, you know, have everybody in the company start calling your projects, prospects, and clients. And if you are a community-based business or a physical location, you know, we've been talking about go out and visit, starting with a one-mile radius and working your way out. Go start reintroducing yourself to your, na your business neighbors. Now is the time to re reassert that um, thought level, uh, that, uh, sorry, that uh, thought leadership and that level of authority, okay? And then just for our last, you know, just for the sake of the recording, in our promise, in making ourselves more compelling, here are a few of the items that we've discussed that um, can play into our new, um, our new service offering, right? To rally around that desire, right? Here's one of, the, if, if you run an office, what are you thinking? How am I gonna put everybody back in that office and are they gonna be safe? right is the first thing you're going to do is allow delivery people grubhub amazon and every outside vendor in your office possibly polluting the environment almost literally no way you're not going to allow that so what should you be thinking if you sell a product or a service that goes into an office 
how can I have an off hours, off peak service offering? Okay, so here are a few ideas that from last week. But um, so let's so let's start thinking about how we can let's start thinking about our promotions, our bundled services, and our message back out to our customers. Um, you know, we we talked about it about a month ago. What could we do more? You know, same for same, same for less, same for letter later, more for same. It's time now to it's time now to have that conversation. Some of you have been still operating at a pretty good capacity or pretty good clip. But the world, you know, the world is is about to re enter the economy, you know, with with fewer or very little constraint. And they want to make sure that once they get back out there they're running they're running uh full guns. So um so I'm gonna save this for next week and uh we talked about our sideways strategy and um and if you remember last so I'll wrap up on this point if there's any questions or comments uh, Julia, if you want to, if you want to prepare any of those, but um, if you remember from last week, we uh, two weeks ago we had the feedback of starting a bit of a uh, you know a, a portal or a central repository for all of your um, contact information and what would make a good introduction for you. So we're calling it the Seven Stage Advisors Marketplace. We started a Google form. And last week, Melissa sent an email out that had the link to the Google form. You could certainly try to transpose this or take a picture of it, and you'll get there. But um, we sent it out to you. Just answer the Google form, just a couple of, I think just three little parts. Just tell us who you are, what's a, who's a specific person you want an introduction to, or who's the type of person or type of company you want an intro to, and we'll, and we'll start doing some matchmaking. Um, so thank you for that feedback. And we created the marketplace, and we uh, and we'll we'll make whatever introductions that um, that we think that that we think we can, and that'll be helpful for you. So, Julia, were there any questions or comments or thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, no, not at the moment. Okay, you guys are all questioned and chatted out. I like it. Um, all right, so I'll come back off of uh, screen share, and. Um, all right, I'll just finish this up here. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys, so you know, you know um, uh, how to reach me if you have any questions at all, um, just, you know, or speak to your advisor over the, co the coming week. Let's make sure our messaging, you know, we're, we're getting close. It's the grand reopening for just for most of us, if not all of us. So uh, let's make sure that our messaging is really on target. Our thought leadership is really on target. And we are thinking through your messaging over the next two weeks should be about, it's going to be mostly the distress, to be, to be candid. But what is their dream? What is their major area of distress? And that's what we should be, that's what we should be messaging right now, um, uh, that's what we should be messaging uh, right now in our marketing and in our social media. Okay, so uh, so let's make sure that that was a. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Uh, so let's so let's make sure that that's our that's our message for the coming week. So uh, thank you all again for. Um, oh, you know what? I wanted to ask you a question because this is one area we had a question. Uh, thanks, Kelly Stu. Uh, real quick, if you wouldn't mind putting this chat in the. Uh, you wouldn't mind putting this in the chat box. The, um, we, these calls, our initial intention was to have these calls go every week, okay, and during COVID. That was, that was our, initial, our initial intention. But we wanted to make sure that as we start to go back to work, um, that these calls are valuable for you, um, but, uh, but they're not going to be overwhelming and too time, too time constraining. So what frequency would you want these calls to be? Uh, and we're thinking weekly, semi-monthly, monthly. If you guys have an opinion about that and you want to put it in the chat box, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do whatever you want. So if you want these to keep going weekly, yeah, weekly still preferred. Okay. So whatever, whatever you think. So thanks, Steve. So keep putting, putting them in. If you guys want these weekly, we'll keep going weekly. Um, awesome. All right. Um, and, um, and we'll keep them going at whatever frequency that you guys want. All right, and um, great, okay, awesome, and weekly for now. All right, great, so uh, keep them coming. If there are any topics that you want me to get into, 
And all right, good. Weekly or even bi-monthly. Awesome. Weekly's good, but I can see bi-weekly next month. All right, awesome. Yeah, so once things quiet down a little bit, right. Yeah, that was what I was going to ask, Joe. I've been getting, um, during the middle of the week, some requests for topics. And, and everything we've been talking about each week has been a combination of where I think the agenda should be or the topic should be, plus something that you all have asked about. Or I've gotten enough inquiries. So if you're wondering, like, why did he repeat that from last week? That's because I probably got a half a dozen or more inquiries to revisit a topic or make sure I touch on it or remind you about it. And so I, um, uh, so that's why you're seeing the content you're seeing. It's, it's based on uh, a lot on the feedback you've given. So I will, um, I'll do that, Joe. I'll send out a couple of topics in our in Melissa's email. If you guys want to reply back with what you think would be the most valuable or a topic you want, and I'll make sure that we cover that because uh, because th this you know these calls are for you are for you guys intended for you, and I want to make sure that you get full value out of it. So it sounds like weekly for now, and then when things get to some normalcy, maybe twice a month um, is seems to be the uh, seems to be the uh, the overwhelming um, feedback. So you got it. You got it. So we're weekly until further notice. And, um, and then um, I'll ask you all, we'll, we'll make sure to ask you when is the right time to go to bi-monthly um, or semi-monthly. And, um, and, we'll, and then we'll go from there. All right? And we'll circulate some topics. So, um, okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for the feedback once again. I'm glad you guys um, are getting value from this. That's what's it, what it's intended for. And uh, we'll see you all next week.